So the one that doesn't love doesn't know God. God is love. In this, verse 9, this is our next verse in sequence. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Okay, a lot of times what we'll say, I say it too, is if you really want to see the expression of God's love, look at the cross. And we should, because, you know, Apostle Paul says, and love of God is manifested, put on display, in that while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us, right? But that's only one slice of love. That's self-sacrificial. That's a high expression of love, for sure. But John takes it to a different level. And thank God he does, because he doesn't drop you off at the cross right here. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us. God sent his son so that we might live through him. You want to know what God's love looks like? Watch Jesus live. That's how you live the love of God on the earth. Watch Jesus live. Now, we know there's fuller theology than this. Jesus dies, Jesus is buried, Jesus resurrected, Jesus lives forevermore. So when we say we live through him, we know what we mean. We live through resurrected Jesus. We're not living vicariously through dead Jesus, reading stories of a 2,000-year-old shepherd from Galilee going, boy, I'd like to live like that. No, it's better than that. We have a resurrection. And therefore, we know that our true life comes in knowing him. But the life he lives is a template. It's the best expression that we have pre-cross of what the love of God looks like. How much better is the expression of God's love post-cross? That struck me this last couple weeks. I go, what if the life of Jesus in the Gospels is the best that you can expect to see on the earth pre-Calvary? Okay, I've been wrestling with that. I'm not really positive on it. I'm not really sure I've landed. But it's fair, right? I mean, I think it's a fair question. What if what you see of Jesus in the four Gospels, is the best expression of a life that you can live prior to the cross and the resurrection. Okay. If so, it's the highest expression of love anyone's ever seen. We still, people that don't even follow the Lord still quote Jesus as a model of what the world could look like if you loved your neighbor as yourself. He's not even on the cross. He's just walking around, talking to people. I mean, he's just loving people. That'd be great. How much better? For those of us who have resurrected Jesus. Because natural Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John Jesus, he leaves the room and you are in the room. You feel him leave the room. I mean, he's gone. I got to go follow him. And that's what people did. Peter goes, to whom else shall we go? <laughs> you got the words of eternal life. When I'm not in the room with you, I don't feel the same. Um, I'm not going anywhere. If you go across the sea, I'm going across the sea. It's why Peter goes, Lord, if it's you, bid me come out there on the water. I don't like being in boats where you're not in boats anymore. I mean, I spent my life in boats without you. And then one day you got in my boat. I don't like being in boats without you. So I don't want to be in this boat if you're out there. Maybe that's how we ought to preach Peter walking on the water. Is to go, who would want to stay in a boat when Jesus is not in the boat? If he's out there, that's where I want to be. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work for us because... Jesus is in our hearts. And so Christ is everywhere we are. So if the Gospels is, is the best man can do pre-cross, what do we got? What do we have post-cross, post-resurrection, and know that the love of God is manifested in that we get to live this life through Him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and that He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins so that Christ actually pays for me. That's the great expression of love. And that lands me on these just these simple sentences. I just, just almost these little talking points. Don't boast of your love for God. Boast of God's love for you. Well, let me read them and we'll work them. Reverse the paradigm of performance. Celebrate what He has done for you. Embrace his love as equipment to love others. Be unwaveringly convinced of how loved you are. Let me just work through these for a little bit. Don't boast of your love for God because it, your love for God is not the proper expression of what love is. Your love for God is a roller coaster, man. Your love for God is affected by what kind of day you had at work or how emotional you are or whether you're broke or whether you're prosperous or whether you're sick. I don't mean your faith wavers. I don't mean you don't trust God anymore, but let's be honest. We're passionate one day and not passionate the next. And sometimes it has to do with how much revival we're in for whatever work that term's worth, um, to use a largely secular term. Um, whatever state of emotional euphoria we're in is a direct link to how much we're excited about God. Thank God he doesn't do that with us. 
You know, like, you know, it's been a tough week in the universe and I don't have time for you and your stuff. You know, I don't have time to hear your whining and your complaining. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. I'll meet you next week. Good luck. You go, man, oh boy, uh, what did I do? And, then, and yet that's kind of how a lot of people feel about God because we've, had, we've, we've linked love with emotion and we've linked love with feeling. And Boston said it's more than a feeling. <laughs> Sometimes you got to quote some Boston. Well, it is more than a feeling. It's not, a, it's not even a feeling. A feeling is a byproduct of love, but it's not love itself. Thank God. Don't boast of what you have for him. Boast of what he has for you. Be proud of the love that God has for you and then roll around in it and enjoy it. I'm loved. He thinks so much of me and has given so much for me. That's worth celebrating.